Hello and welcome to Let's Play Mist in VR. Yeah, I know, I'm not actually in VR right now. That's for two reasons. The first is that I like to write these intros, and if I do it in VR, I can't look at my script and read it. The second is that the menu is actually not visible on the screen if I'm in VR, so therefore it also doesn't show up on the recording. So instead of me rambling to an empty starry sky, you get this instead. We'll switch to my VR recordings as soon as I actually start the game. And by the way, the menu will also not be visible if I switch to the in-game menu while playing, so I apologize for that. Since I've done this game before, albeit not this version, this will be similar to my recent Let's Play of Mass Effect Legendary Edition. It won't be the meticulously planned style that looks at the story in detail like you're used to for me. For that, please check out my original Let's Play Mist. Here, I'm going to play the game and let you experience it with me. I haven't played this before, beyond making sure it worked and walking around on Mist Island a little bit, so you're getting my raw first-time reactions to this version. That's also why I'm using VR. I want to record this as I play it for the first time, but I want to play it in VR, so you're getting to see it in VR. Or, well, the recording of it anyway. It's also a kind of experiment for me. Can I actually record VR games? Can I get the audio quality I want? Do you, my audience, like watching me play VR games? Um, these are things that I want to know. Uh, for example, for when Firmament is released. So with this game, I'm gonna try how this works. You'll have to deal with my head movements and the audio quality for my voice won't be as good since I'm not gonna be right next to my microphone the whole time. Um, so you'll have to deal with some echoes and changes in volume. Hopefully it won't be too bad, but please bear with me as I try to figure this out. All right, um, we are going to start a new game. And starting a new game will clear the autosave from your previous game, which I uh, don't care about. Uh, one of the new things this game adds is the option to have randomized puzzles. Which, of course, is what I'm going to use. Because I know all the solutions to the originals. Well, I probably don't remember most of them by this point. It's been years since I played Mist. I don't think I've played it since the uh, since I made the Let's Play. Still, we're going to randomize things and see um, how that works, what they randomized, how they did it. It'll be interesting to see. So now, let's start and switch to VR. about whose hands might one day hold my misbook are unsettling to me. I know my apprehensions might never be allayed, and so I close, realizing that perhaps the ending has not yet been written. All right, um... Let me actually turn around. Yeah, so I was facing the wrong way because my microphone is on my desk where my computer is and um, SteamVR puts the front of your game space away from where your computer is. 
So the game will occasionally like to put stuff behind me because it expects me to be facing that way. I want to be facing this way. Um, for that reason, I'll also mostly be using the thumbstick to uh, turn rather than, you know, physically turning, which it can do, but then I'm talking in the wrong direction. Um, I can, like, walk around here, too. Like, I have a pretty big game space here. I can go all the way over here, and, you know, that serves no purpose because there's nothing here now. But um, that would just make it hard for you to hear me, so I'm going to stay over here. Um, so, yeah, I'm using teleport movement, which means that um, I move myself like that. You can do smooth move movement in this game, but it makes me really motion sick, so um, I don't. There's a starfisher. Can we climb up and, and see a ribbon? Is there an eclipse happening, or is that just like a... Um, like a moon. I don't know. It's very windy, I can tell you that much. Um, I guess this is the desert. Is this supposed to be like New Mexico near the cleft anyway? Shouldn't there be a volcano near here then? Not seeing it. And we have the mist book. And I just hit my mic, so maybe I should take a step back. Um, I have bounds. If you've never played VR, I can I can see, you cannot see, uh, bounds where my play area is, which show up as like, purple lines, but my mic is sticking out a little bit, so I'm going to take a step back. This is all new to me, so. All right, missed book. It's um, a little bit smaller, maybe, than the one that Cyan made for the 25th anniversary, but it's about... It's about the same size. It's a bit big for just a linking book. I'm assuming this is not the descriptive book. Interesting. The uh, the video, the flyby, is actually behind the panel, like, but it doesn't have depth. Like, it's still uh, clearly a video, but it's not on the page. It's a little behind it, which you can tell. That's really cool, just being able to link by actually putting your hand on a linking panel. And yeah, it has me facing this way because again, it expects me to stand the other way around. This is probably where it wanted me to uh, be looking. And we're on mist. And it's, it's, it's kind of amazing, honestly. Um, yeah, and I know like this is not the best way for you, the viewer, to experience the game. It is the way I want to experience the game right now, which is why I'm doing this, and so I can share my reactions to seeing it this way. Um, you don't get the benefit of actually feeling like you're there because you know you're. I, I can't share my real VR view. Not that you'd be able to see it without a headset anyway. But you'll just have to trust me that this is kind of amazing. I think I, uh, in Uru, I talked about, you know, how amazing it was to uh, to visit the city, to visit Dunny, all these places we've we've known about, and this is even weirder in a way, even more amazing because I'm here, I'm standing here. Uh, if you've never played VR. Um, and think like, oh, it's just a gimmick. It's, it's really not, not for these types of games, because it feels like you're here. It feels like, I mean, obviously I, I'm still in my room. I can tell that, but the you can see the scale of things, the size of things. Like that tower is really high, and I can tell that it's really high in a way that you just can't on a screen. I can tell that this dock is maybe like, what? three or four meters wide, which on a screen you can't easily tell. Um, so it gives you a really um, different perspective. It, it, it feels very different than just playing a game on a screen. And I'm very excited about this because I played Abduction in VR uh, way after I originally played it, and it was such a different experience. It's, uh, 
still the most amazing puzzle game in VR I've ever played. Um, mainly because it's an actual game. Most puzzle games in VR tend to be like two-hour tech demos. Um, but yeah, it is just so amazing. And um, But you know how I play. I'm not going to run through this. I'm going to take my time, look at things. Um, like, for example, let's go down here. Um, I guess we added a button. Was there a button or did you just clock, click on the door? No, I think there was a button. Now I actually have to push the button. Door still open. I'm assuming that's going to close. There it goes. Yep. Um... I can be way more excited about the whole VR aspect of this than uh, the graphics. Uh, it, sorry, uh, that just happened because this game uses the thumbstick to teleport and you have to be kind of accurate with pushing up in order to actually teleport, otherwise you turn. Um, <laughs> so I hope they improve that in a patch to give you a little bit more uh, leeway. I'm trying not to teleport too far, like I could go all the way down, I guess, but want to get um, some views and again this is just it's bigger than I thought it would be like this is my arm my arm span and it's definitely bigger than that um, I'll try not to move my head too abruptly so you don't um, get motion sick watching this, I hope. And the dimensional imager is now actually dimensional. Kind of interesting. Looks like it's refracting the light because the bottom of the pool. I keep hitting my mic. I have to take a step back, even though um, I would prefer to be closer to it. I guess I'll just have to talk louder. It's kind of refracting the light under there, so that it gets distorted. Um, looks pretty cool. There should not be a button on the back yet, because this version of the game doesn't have a uh, rhyme. Not yet, anyway. I think they said it was going to be added in a patch. later on. Alright, what we have here? Settings for dimensional imager. These are not randomized. Topographical extrusion test 40. Marcus switch diagram 47. Water tur turbulent pool 67. Um, well, I wonder if you can still delete things as well. I don't remember how to do that. Do you like press it again the second time uh, while you're... I th My height gets screwed up after I've been there. Um, I'm playing with the index controllers for anybody who else is uh, playing with that and the index controllers by default don't have the height reset button bound to anything. Uh, so I created a custom binding that put, the, put it on the left a controller B button because both B buttons are camera by default. I think this game wasn't really optimized for these controllers. They're not in the menu. Um, I can't show you because the menu doesn't show up. Anyway, this is marker switch. We knew that, but it's in 3D for me anyway. Then we have the uh, topographical extrusion test. And I still don't know exactly what this is. I think some people said it might be rhyme. It could still be missed with the tower in the background on the mountain. I don't know. Uh, of course I know 
what to put in here for the Atrus's message, unless that was randomized. I don't actually know. But let's actually look around and do this properly. Still want to take my time, you know? And, uh, oh. Oh, there we go. Use the menu button on your left controller to open the menu. Actually, I need to press A because, again, these instructions are wrong for the index controllers and you can't see the menu, so I won't really be doing that very much. I also don't really have a good way of checking um, how long videos are. So I can open the uh, Steam VR menu, which tells me the time, and I think you cannot see that. So maybe I'll um, look at that and try to guess it. Normally, I look at my recording on my laptop. You can't see that now, obviously, because I have a headset on. Um, all right. That's where the ship's going to be, I guess. Can we jump in the water? No, I don't think so. I mean, obviously, I can walk this way, except that's the end of my room, so I can't. Um, if I do this, then I can walk this way in the next space. Like that. And it doesn't like doing that. That's not surprising. Uh, yeah, if you get out of bounds and again, like this, usually just turns the screen black, and I'm already getting tangled in my court, which is another reason why I like the turn with the thumbsticks, not turn physically. That's one advantage of playing this on the Quest, I guess. Um, even though the graphics on this are undoubtedly better. I've never actually seen the Quest version, but... It's unfortunate this game does support ray tracing, but not in VR. Was that the bow? Spritz, or whatever those are called, of the ship? And the birds here. Which, you know, were just videos in the original. And I'm too close again. I'm hitting my mic. Still hitting the mic. There. No, stay up. Turn all of these on. I wonder if they randomized this, because I kind of don't expect them to have like, how to open the vault, because what would you do? How, how would that be different? Really, the only thing that really needs to be randomized is the code at the end. Um, let's go up here, because that will be a cool view. Because that will prevent you from uh, finishing this game in a minute, which you could otherwise do. All these gears are gigantic. You'll be hearing me say that a lot, probably. Like, wow, this is way bigger than I thought it would be. So is the sun for some reason. Maybe the quirk of this age. Or just the quirk of the graphics. It's a shame you can't ever never, ever see the tower rotate. You can't really be outside of the library while that's happening. It's something you'd be able to do in Uru in two players. And, uh, you know, um, if we ever do Uru in VR, sign me up. That would be amazing. Let's see. I'll turn those on so everything shows up on the map, of course. There's the big tree. Not so big yet. Press the A button to reset your height in game. Again, that's not true. These are, I don't know what controller those are instructions for. The ones that defaults to in the diagram are the Oculus controllers. Um, would make more sense if they were instructions for the the Vive wands, which were the default controllers for this headset. Um, they put the note on a rock, make it easier to spot, I guess. Um, okay. I'm trying to grab this in a way, in a better way, but it's not really working. No, I'm just gonna, I have to turn my hand. 
Kind of weirdly. Catherine, I've left for you a message of utmost importance in our four chamber beside the dock. Enter the number of Marcus witches on the island into the imager to retrieve the message. Yours, Atris. Um, yeah, that's the same. If I let go, just, just yeah, it just <laughs> teleports back there. So that's the same. I think there's eight. We've already seen two. Um, there's number three. Um, should I go in here now or wait until we do the puzzle? I don't want to see it. It's weird, like, Greco-Roman architecture doesn't really fit with, um, the rest of the series so much. They changed this. It's not a dentist chair anymore. I knew that they did that, though. That's one of the things I did see. And it kind of makes sense because transitioning a VR player to a laying down perspective. And remember, this game was designed for VR. So if you're on, like, uh, um, Oculus Quest, like, you don't have any choice to play in VR. So transitioning a player to a laying down perspective would be very awkward. So it kind of makes sense that they did this. The year 59. No, that's the time. 59 minutes past midnight, I guess. Um, oh, that's freaky looking. I guess the dates will be different. Wait, that's the Big Dipper. Did I just randomly pick the Big Dipper or the Small Dipper? Or it kind of looks like it anyway. It's not quite the same. I actually spotted on the ceiling somewhere. Doesn't look like it. Now the dates will be different, I'm guessing, with the randomization. Alright, that's bright all of a sudden. Um, here's the library. You know what I wish they would have done, and I realize why they, do why they don't, because it's like... Oh, wait. Tiana's grave looks different than it did in Real Mist. Obviously, it wasn't present in the original. It was there in Real Mist. Um, but I feel like it was smaller. I played Real Mist in a while, so I might be wrong. The blue desert flowers that we also see in Uru, of course, around her grave. And um, I think that this Tiana, who might. Um, my uh, dunny isn't very good. It's kind of an interesting thing to put in the game because if you consider that this might be the first way uh, for somebody to experience mist, if they've never seen, never played mist before, this grave is here. You have a writing system they can't read and have no way of learning inside the game. Um. <laughs> and even so, it's a person they would never have heard of, isn't mentioned anywhere. Um, so it's kind of a fun, funny thing. It's an Easter egg for fans, but by making it this prominent, it kind of tells you there's something about it and there's not. Climate of this, it seems a bit drier, more arid than original mist. Or am I wrong? Um, I think I read somewhere that they did that, actually. I guess even mist can't escape climate change, even though it's probably on another planet in a different universe altogether. Um, maybe they did that because, you know, Atris is from the desert, so maybe he would have done that on purpose. Actually, did Tiana write mist? Well, she lived in the desert for quite a long time as well. All right, the library. Press the B button to take a picture. This is actually correct information, so that's that's uh, good to know. Yeah, I can press B, camera on, press B to take a picture, and then it takes a picture, which I can see in the photo album in the menu. Uh, the problem with doing that is you can't see the menu, so. <laughs> I can do that. I can like, now I'm going to the photo album and I can see my picture and you can't. 
Um, I will maybe have to do this to refer to um, refer to um, clues because it's not like I can take notes while I'm in VR. Um, but uh, I'll try to minimize it because yeah, you can't really see what's what's going on. Here's the bookshelf. I don't really like the graphics of this because clearly the burned books don't look as good as they did in the original. And the intact books don't look like they were spared the fire so much as they were um, put there after the fire. So I'm not a huge fan of how this looks to be honest. I will say the books are very easily readable. The font is nice and big. It was one of the problems with abduction, which was after all not designed for VR. It was added as an afterthought. Um, in abduction, it's very hard to read the um, to read the uh, notes and journals when you're in VR. One of the nice things that abduction does, though, and this game doesn't, and I really hope they'll uh, maybe they'll bring it back in a patch, um, or and at least they should do it in firmament. I hope. In Abduction, if you take your headset off, you seamlessly switch to screen mode. So you can just take your headset off and continue playing with mouse and keyboard like normal. So if you want to read a journal, you can just take your headset off and read it. Whereas in this game, if you take your headset off, yeah, you can't do anything. So um, that was really nice about Abduction. It's like the only game I, I know that does that, and it's so awesome. So please, Cyan, if by some weird... Um, Coincidence, one of you are watching this, please, please put that back in this game and definitely do it for Firmament where I care way more. Um, but yeah, this is pretty easy to read. I don't think I'm going to. You've heard me read these uh, books twice. Once in my um, original Let's Play and once in... Uh, once in my... Uh, the live stream I did with Nora. So I don't think I want to spend uh, the time to go through these again. I know them by heart anyway. Um, I know some of you will probably be very disappointed in that. But yeah, you can just go back to my original Miss Let's Play if you want to hear this. Uh, this will be interesting because this is so hard to uh, um, so hard to navigate in the original mist. Remember, I I put like the little map on the side so you could actually tell where I was going. Um, and and this should tell you something about how real VR is, by the way, because I keep thinking I need to hold the book down so I'm not blocking the mic, mic because but that's not a thing because this book isn't actually here. Um, But yeah, that tells you how like sometimes you get really into VR and you you know try to sit down on chairs that aren't there. Um, channel would the original books actually say anything on the spine? Oh, these drop. I can drop this on the floor and then I have to bend over to get it. Oh no, I teleports back. Okay. Did the original books actually say the names of the ages on on the spine? I don't remember that if they did. But very good. elaborate drawing of a ship. Submersible lamp. Branch and will. This is all classic stuff. Um, I think I got distracted. Oh, here's the constellations. Um, this is probably still the same. This will be interesting to try and figure out because it's not like I can refer to my notes while playing this. And I don't want to take pictures of every page in this book. So I'll probably take pictures of the constellations as I find them and then go back to the book to try and figure out which is which. Yeah, you can go there. Um, what order should I do the ages in? Um, I feel like because things have been randomized, I should probably do 
selenitic after mechanical, just in case the sounds are different. I did selenitic first in my original Let's Play. My normal playthrough order is stone ship first, so I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna do that. Um Is this yeah, this is the fireplace book. Which also tells you how to get into the fireplace. Did it do that originally? Oh, this will be fun. Get over here. Um because aren't there like hundreds of patterns in this book? Like this is gonna be a very annoying thing to do if there really are hundreds of them. I mean, there's quite a few. We'll find out in the end, I guess, if we need to go to pattern 200. How would they have randomized that? Because that's audio. Guess we'll find out. Speaking of uh, audio, um, actually not speaking of audio, speaking of this painting, this is a knob. Which is uh, being annoying. It's kind of fiddly to turn that. See, getting out of the library in time to see that is, is kind of hard. Might be easier to do on free roam mode. Um. I was saying, speaking of audio, and I'm too close to my mic again, it keeps happening. Let's check in with um, static, good to know. Um, well, I mean, for the, the uh, hearing impaired, it's good that they say that, of course. Let's check in with Cirrus. Now, I happen to know that they did not use the original um, videos for this, unfortunately. Alright, yeah, so they use these 3D animations. I get why they don't use the original um, version, because they're very low resolution videos that wouldn't really fit with the, with the graphics of this game. I don't know if they still have like the original uh, video recordings that they could maybe master in a higher quality, but it does seem like to be the original audio, I think. Uh, but honestly, this does look pretty awful, to be honest. I hate to say it, but it does. Like, I don't like it at all. Um, let's check in with uh, the uh, other brother.
And that guitar looks even worse. Yeah, it's a shame. I wish they didn't do it this way, but they did. Um, I guess we'll go to the tower later. When I want to look around the island more first and get all the marker switches. There's the power line. Ladders are kind of interesting. I tried this before. You actually climb them. You don't really... Well, I guess you do need to grab the rungs. This is still kind of motion sickness inducing. The thing to know is if you let go, you do not fall. <laughs> Which is uh, very helpful. Which means that you can just, you know, go up here and then let go and then reset the breaker, which I right now don't need to do. Ooh, butterflies. And then I can climb back down. Ah, and I've reached the ground. Um, so, yeah, that's not too bad. A, bit, a little bit fiddly, but... It's okay. And the rocket ship. Remnant of when they didn't want to use linking books. I think you were actually meant to go to the Aegis using the, you know, the rocket ship and using the actual ship instead of uh, the linking book idea. Is this number four? I think this is number four. Yeah, we have the one on the dock, the one by the gears, and then um, by the, uh, the planetarium, and now this one. I just love getting all these views. That's half of what I'm going to be doing. If this is boring to you, then don't watch me. Uh, because I just want to look at everything in this magnificent invention we call virtual reality. Don't you ever just want to go back in time and show somebody from 1993 when they just played the original Mist this, like they would not be able to believe it. This looks very different. I can't really tell what it is. The symbol. You cannot tell until you actually turn them on, which will make which will make things a little bit more interesting, I guess. There's your tiny little submerged ship. I feel like I can just reach out and touch that, but I probably can't, and I'm gonna hit something if I try, so. <laughs> just pull it up by hand. I can squeeze my hand, and it doesn't quite support the NX controllers entirely because I can't put my thumbs down individually, nor can I do individual fingers. I can only do that. It's annoying. I can't give anybody the middle finger because I can only do that. Um, all right. Number five. And, I mean, I want to go down and see this, but I think I'll save it until I actually need to go there. So, number six. Mechanical age clock. These controls are very different. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. It makes... Makes sense that you can do it as well, looking at the clock rather than having that sit on the ground the way you did in the original. I think a lot of the, you know, changes in. Uh... There we go again with the mic. Until I'm a professional at recording VR. Um... Uh, it's not quite just putting it at six. Put it at six. It's like you have to turn it. 
more than the arm turns. But yeah, a lot of these control changes are probably because of uh, VR. And the time's going to be different, so I'm not going to be able to cheat this. And I won't be able to get to marker switch number seven over there. And over here is number eight. What I was saying earlier before I got distracted um, is I would really have loved them to, you know, reimagine this, not just remake it. To have a mist that recreates the island and is, you know, makes it look like a place where people actually lived. Make it more, design it more the way like the later mist games were designed to make it feel like a real place rather than just a collection of puzzles. And it probably, I don't know if it would sell as well, because it's something that, you know, real big Mist fans are going to love, but it's not going to have the nostalgic factor for people who played this once in the 90s and now want to look at it again, I guess. Um, it would also be way more work, and this clearly is a side project for um, Cyan while they're working on Firmament. But you can tell by some of the... The graphics aren't as good as they could be. It definitely doesn't look as good as Abduction does, and that's a few years old by this point. Especially stuff like this. Like you can clearly tell this is a texture. VR makes that even more use, uh, even more obvious. It doesn't really look like a brick wall. That's. I. I feel like I should not fall in in there. This tree doesn't look as imposing as I thought it would. I'm not allowed to go behind it. That's, but I'm guessing it'll get a lot more imposing once, uh, once we actually turn stuff on. But yeah, if if Cyan ever wants to, you know, make that version of Mist, the um, real life version of Mist, <laughs> basically, sign me up. There's the boiler. Are these like fire supposed to be fire marbles or just light bulbs? They kind of look like light bulbs. But where's the power coming from? Um, I don't remember the combination of this. And even if I did, I would like it if they showed your hand while doing this. Um, even if I did, it would be different anyway, probably. So can't do that yet. Save doing the important job of protecting a book of matches. Um, anyway, we counted eight um, marker switches. Confirmed that they did not randomize that. Would have been weird if they had. So let's go look for Atrus. In real mist, you can walk down this way. In this version, you cannot. So I'll head around. There we go. And there we are. Oh my god, what's Atrus gonna look like? I fear the worst. The right height, yes. Catherine, my love, I have to leave quickly. Something terrible has happened. It's hard for me to believe. Most of my books have been destroyed. Catherine, it's one of our sons. I suspect I can but I shouldn't leap to conclusions. I'll find him and Cirrus as well. I should have known not to have left my library unchecked for so long. I've removed the remaining undamaged books from the library and placed them in the places of protection. You shouldn't have to use the books until I return, but if you've forgotten the access key, remember the tower rotation, and don't worry, Catherine. Everything will be fine. I'll see you shortly. Oh, 
and erase this message after you viewed it just to be safe. But Catherine never got this message because she's trapped on Riven. Uh, that was part one of Sirius and Akinar's plan, according to the journal from Mist 4. If I remember right. Um, yeah, that looked awful too. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it does. Also, it didn't sound like the original audio. Maybe it's the one from Real Mist? I'm not sure. Or they have you recorded it. Um, or I'm just wrong. Alright, I guess we should go and rotate the towers. I guess we already rotated it. We should go look at it. And see if we can get to um, Stone Ship in the next video.